Nadia Bogdanova was a simple Belarusian girl who was nine years old when the war began. In 1941, the orphanage in which she lived was evacuated to Frunz. Nadia and several children got off the train during one of the stops to go to the front with her comrades, and these were children under the age of 14. Nadia joined the Belarusian partisans, who could not refuse even such assistance. Surprisingly, not only did she not become a burden for them, at the age of nine, Nadia became a scout in the partisan detachment of Uncle Vanya Dyachkov. Small, thin, she, pretending to be a beggar, wandered among the fascists, noticing everything, remembering everything, and brought the most valuable information to the squad. And then, together with the partisan fighters, she blew up the fascist headquarters, derailed the echelon with military equipment. Mind objects. It is unlikely that she even thought about the consequences that could come if she fell into the hands of enemies. Red flags over Vitebsk. On the eve of the upcoming holiday of the October Revolution, at a meeting of the partisan detachment, they discussed who would go to Vitebsk and hang red flags on the buildings in which the fascists lived in honor of the holiday. According to the commander of the detachment Mikhail Ivanovich Dyachkov, the red flags hung out in honor of the holiday were supposed to serve as a sign to the residents of the city that the war with the Nazi invaders was continuing. In order to raise the fighting spirit of the Vitebchans, the fascists carefully guarded the approaches to the city, searched everyone and even sniffed. If the suspect's hat smelled of smoke or gunpowder, they considered him a partisan and shot him on the spot. There was less attention to children, so we decided to entrust this task to 10-year-old Nadia Bogdanova and 12-year-old Vanya Svantsov. At dawn on the 7th of November, 1941st year, the partisans drove the children closer to Vitebsk. They were given a sledge in which the brooms were neatly stacked. Among them are three brooms, in the base of which red flags were wound, and on top. Bars. According to the idea of the partisans, children should sell brooms to distract the eyes of the fascists. Nadia and Vanya entered the city without any problems. None of the fascists paid much attention to small children with sleds. In order to remove the suspicions of the Germans looking in their direction, Nadia with a sledge approached a group of fascists and offered them to buy brooms. They began to laugh and poke the muzzles of their guns in her direction, after which one of them drove her away in broken Russian. All day they walked around the city and looked at the buildings in the city center where they could put red flags. When evening came and it became dark, they set to work. During the night, the guys set up flags at the railway station, a vocational school, and a cigarette factory. When dawn came, red flags were already flying on these buildings. Having completed the task, the children hurried to the partisan detachment to report on the completed task. Along the way, they brought cigarettes for the partisans. And this was a fatal mistake. When they had already left the city and went out on the high road, the fascists caught up with them and searched them. When they found the cigarettes, they guessed who the children were carrying them to and began to interrogate, after which they took them back to the city. One of the fascists interrogated them at the headquarters. After the interrogation, he ordered the children to be shot. They were placed in the basement, where there were many Soviet prisoners of war. The next day, everyone was taken out of town to be shot. Nadia and Vanya were standing Irva under the gun of the fascists. The children held hands and cried. A fraction of a second before the shot, Nadia lost consciousness. Some time later, Nadia woke up among the dead, among whom was Vanya Zvantsov. Reconnaissance and combat in Balbeki, after the capture of settlements of the Belarusian USSR, the Nazis set up firing points there. Mined roads dug tanks into the ground. In one of these settlements, in the village of Balbeki, it was necessary to conduct reconnaissance and establish where the Germans had camouflaged guns. Machine guns, where the sentries are standing, firm which side it is better to attack the village. The command decided to send the chief of intelligence of the partisans Farapont Slesarenko and Nadia Bogdanova to this task. Nadia, disguised as a beggar, had to go around the village and Slesarenko to cover her departure in the woods near the village. The fascists easily let the girl into the village, considering that she was one of the homeless children who walk around the villages in the cold, collecting food in order to somehow feed themselves. Nadia went around all the yards, collected alms, and memorized everything she needed. In the evening, she returned to the forest of Slesarenko. There a partisan detachment was waiting for her, to which she reported the information. At night, the partisans machine-gunned the Nazis from both sides of the village. Then Nadia participated in a night battle for the first time, however, Slesarenko did not let her go a step away from him. In this fight, Slesarenko was wounded, Nadia bandaged his wound. 
a green rocket soared into the sky, which was a signal from the commander for all partisans to retreat into the forest. Slesarenko ordered Nadia to leave him and go to the squad for help. Nadia ran through the snowdrifts on a frosty night to the partisan detachment, which was about 10 kilometers away. On the way, she wandered into a small farm. Near one of the houses where the police were having dinner, there was a horse with a sleigh. Having crept up to the house, Nadia got into the sleigh and returned to the wounded Slesarenko. After getting on the sledge, they returned to the squad together. Then the girl was only 10 years old. Mining of the bridge in Karasevo in February, 1942nd year, according to other sources. 1943rd year, Nadia, together with the partisan bombers, was ordered to destroy the railway bridge in Karasevo. When the girl mined it and was returning to the squad, she was stopped by policemen. Nadia pretended to be a beggar, then they searched her and found a piece of explosives in her bag. When they began to interrogate her, at that moment there was an explosion, and the bridge blew up right in front of the policeman. The policeman realized that it was Nadia who had booby-trapped him. The girl was captured and taken to the Gestapo. There they tortured her for a long time, burned a star on her back, poured icy water on her in the cold, and threw her on a red-hot stove. Having failed to get information from her, the fascists threw the tortured, bloody girl out into the cold, deciding that she would not survive. Nadia was picked up by the residents of the village of Zanalyachki, who were leaving her. After the torture, Nadia almost lost her sight. After the war, after the end of the Great Patriotic War, Nadia was sent to Odessa for treatment. In Odessa, academician Vladimir Petrovich Filatev returned her sight. Returning to Vitebsk, at the age of 16, Nadia got a job at a factory. Nadia did not tell anyone for a long time that she fought with the fascists. And she didn't even know that a monument had been erected to her, posthumously, as her comrades thought. Fifteen years later, she heard on the radio how the head of intelligence of the 6th Partisan Detachment, Farapont Slesarenko, her commander, said that the soldiers would never forget their dead comrades and named among them Nadia Bogdanova, who saved his life. Wounded. It was only then that the people who worked with her learned about what an amazing fate she was, Nadia Bogdanova, who was awarded the Orders of the Red Banner, the Patriotic War of the First Degree, medals. She became the youngest pioneer hero, her name is listed in the Book of Honor, of the Belarusian Republican Pioneer Organization named after Lenin. Nadezhda Alexandrovna Bogdanova lived all her life in Vitebsk, married Kravtsov. She raised four children alone, her husband died early. She died on the 21st of August, 1991.